Good morning, Galilee. We're off to another exciting day. I have a map for you just ahead so you can see where we're going. It's always nice to wake up and see the fishermen coming in like Peter, Andrew, James, and John on the Sea of Galilee. Here we are, breakfast at Ron Beach. More food than you could ever hope to eat. And there's Steve getting sore. <laughs> there's Steve. Here he is. All kinds of fruits and... Good morning, Galilee. This is day four. We're starting out in Tiberias. Today we're going to drive down here to Sepphoris. And after we see the ancient city of Sepphoris where Joseph and Jesus worked every day, we're going to go to Megiddo and see that ancient tell and the ruins there. Then we're going to come back up to Nazareth. We've got a lot of things to do in Nazareth. And we're going to have Mass out west a little bit up in here. And then we're going to go to Amr's house, who lives in Nazareth, for dinner, and then back to our hotel in Tiberias. Sepphoris, or Zippori in Hebrew, was a Roman capital city during the time of Christ. We're entering the visitor center here. We watched a movie to introduce us to the site before we take a tour of the archaeological ruins. This is, this is from the uh, first century BC, the one of the side streets, and uh, if Jesus and Joseph worked here as carpenters, builders, laborers, then they would have walked right. on this road, original stone. Or stone pavement, exactly. This is a lithostratus. Usually the street is paved with those lime uh, stones. This is the Cardo. Cardo comes from heart, meaning the center of the city, the main road. And you can see the chariot, you know, I, the, the worn out I chariot do not wheels, intend to explain everything or the chariot there, left uh, tracks over this. periods of hundreds of years. Well, I can't help thinking all the time as I walk through and I see these stones, which probably came from the quarries, the stone quarries of Nazareth, if it wasn't Jesus and Joseph that dug it there. The word carpenter is teched on one who works with hard materials. Maybe dig the stones, shape them, maybe even brought them over here and place them. These may have been put there by Jesus and Joseph for all we know. Zippori or Sepphoris is well known for its famous mosaics and the beautiful work. Even the marketplace as all the floor was covered with mosaics. And then we went and visited one of the mansions from the people at the, the, at the time, the first century or so, and these wonderful floors made of, of these mosaics and they have one called the uh, Mona Lisa of Galilee because it's just so beautiful and intricately done as you can see here. Megiddo is one civilization built on another 25 different civilizations. A great story about it is written by Michener called The Source, which explains all of these civilizations built one on top of another over the many centuries. steps 187 steps down this is what King Ahab did he cut a 
vertical shaft, which we just came down on the stairs, and then he built this walkway. I guess it's too late to see, isn't it? And this tunnel in the bedroom. Yeah. And you could walk all the way through this tunnel, quite a ways, and you come to the spring. So that the people in the city of McGee could come down, go through this tunnel, get the water, and go back up in the center of the city. And they didn't have to leave the city walls to get the water. So we're pretending we're the ancient Israelites, going down through this tunnel to get our water. It makes you appreciate being able to turn on the faucet at home. And then here's where the spring was. And as you can see, you come down and get the water, take it back up. pizzas with zata and lebna cheese on them and uh, we wanted to not eat much for lunch because we have a big dinner tonight at Amir's house but these little pizzas were sure good. Next we drove to Nazareth. There was a little traffic but it wasn't too bad and it was a colorful and interesting ride along the way. We first stopped at the Nazareth village which is an attempt to give Christians an idea of what it was like to live in the first century with Jesus and the Holy Family and in their era and it was interesting. Thank you. Welcome. This was a typical tomb used even in the time of Christ where you put them uh, in here. There's a roll of stone in front. But this would be for a whole family. And they would have each their own niches, but after a while they'd come back in and they would take the bones out that were left and put them in ossuaries. But these are actual tomb chambers. This is like Joseph of Arimathea had for Jesus. We'll see those tombs again inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I just rose from the dead. I don't know if you realize that or not. I just came out of the tomb, rose from the dead. Hey, we found a little buddy here, a little donkey. Hello. Want this? Spend them together and they will be attached to make one thread the same yarn. Okay. 
Yeah. We just entered here the Greek Orthodox Church of the Annunciation, and here is a picture of Mary coming to get water from the well. Here's a picture of the Annunciation with Mary with her water jug and the angel Gabriel in the Greek Orthodox say, and also in the Proto-Evangelium of James, second century, that the angel came to Mary here when she was at this well, obviously not under the church at the time, and she was afraid and ran home, and that the angel then came and met her again at her house, which is under the Church of the Annunciation. This is the spring, the actual water, but now they uh, have the church built over it. And here then is the actual water. And sometimes they send it down to the Mary's well, which is kind of the center of town. Tonight we did something we've never done before. This is Amr and his house. He invited our group to his home in Nazareth for dinner. As we walked up the steps, we looked out over the Jezreel Valley and saw a beautiful sight. Entered his home, which is a beautiful home, and here's what we saw waiting for us. And here's what awaits us. Bottles of wine, wonderful foods and salads with pomegranates and apples and pears and avocado and indigenous olives, wonderful bread. Already the wine is starting to flow. We just walked in the door. What kind of a suffering pilgrimage is this anyway? Yeah. Dueling cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Amr and Omaima are good friends of ours and they're doing this as a big favor for us and for our programs because we're a smaller group there are advantages sometimes to that and we're really happy to be here and grateful to them for inviting us into their home here in Nazareth for dinner. <laughs> said that we want you to have a, the experience of being in a Christian home and I just want to say that Steve and Janet are friends of ours. Uh, we work together but that's not what makes us uh, stay together. The, the friendship is more important and Umaima loves Janet. Uh, she always likes to have her come and Steve of course but the, you know that special uh, love for Janet that when I said that to Steve, he said, who doesn't love Jan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you're sharing her with a lot of people. That's the love with a lot of people. We have been blessed, and we'd like to share what God gave us with others as well. So enjoy your meal and feel at home and uh, spread the news that, you know, Christians do exist in the Holy Land. That's very important for us. You both have Okay, Amaima made this wonderful dinner for us and we've just invited her to come in so we can all give her a standing ovation. As we left Amr's house, it was beautiful there. We looked out over the Jezreel Valley and saw the lights and uh, said goodbye and it was sad to leave but we are all so full and we returned back to the Ron Beach Hotel after dark but it was still early before seven o'clock so everybody had a chance to uh, unwind and rest and we're gonna have to pack because tomorrow we head to Jerusalem. <laughs>